Hi everybody, today we are going to learn how to compile and download a program inside Semantic Manager by simulation. So what exactly we are going to do? Uh, so you know about uh, Semantic Manager, that's a software used for S7300 model of Siemens. So now we will check how to create a program, how you can compile it and download it in, uh, using simulation inside the Step 7 Semantic Manager. So let me open the software. So this is step 7 semantic manager. So in this software you can uh, configure, they do the programming of S7300 series. So nowadays uh, uh, the S7300 can be done inside the TIA portal also. So let's check uh, how this is done. Uh, so with the window will open like this, step 7 wizard new project will be displayed. Go to next. So here you can see all the CPU models. So CPU 312, 312Z, etc. So if you are doing with hardware, you have to check which model is the one you are going to do and check the part number also. Each and every device of the Siemens will have its own part number. So that is very important. Yeah, you, here you can see the different models of uh, the S7300, uh, different CPUs you can see. So when you do with hardware, you have to check the uh, part number and the corresponding model. So each and every device of the Siemens will have its own part number. So you can see a range of part numbers here. So I'll go for uh, 314, CPU 314. You can see MPI address, uh, the CPU name, then I'll go for next. So here you can see the block name, OB means organizational block in which you will be doing the main program. Okay. Now the language, which kind of programming language you want, it can be STL, ladder diagram or FBD, structure text list, ladder diagram or uh, functional block diagram. So now we will choose ladder diagram, go to next, finish it. So here you can see the project name, if you want to change the name you can change it or you can keep this name, click on the finish. So once this is done, you can see a project is created with hardware, block, everything, okay. Let's just go back and see what all things are there. You can go to Semantic 300 station, check the hardware. So whatever uh, CPUs you have selected will be displayed inside the rack. A rack will be automatically created and it will be added to that one. So this can be done in a different way. You can create the rack, you can delete everything, whatever you have seen here and connect, create a rack and add inside that one. So that is also possible. So that becomes important when you do with the hardware. Okay. Otherwise you can choose any of the model and go for the simulation. Okay. So now, uh, so you saw the hardware, uh, here you can see a Cimatic 300. The rack will be there, this rail, uh, then uh, power supply. Then you can see IOS, CPU, you can select the CPU from here also, okay. So it becomes relevant when you start with the hardware. So let us continue with this itself. Let's expand this. You can see the blocks. So double click on the blocks, OB1 will be displayed there, double click on OB1 again. Okay, on the side you can see a lot of instructions and uh, you can see the network. So let's start one by one. I want to place a switch and a lamp. So let's go to the bit logic operation, drag the normally open switch and place it here. And click on this particular network, double click on the particular element, it will be displayed. So two ways you can do it, either drag and drop it or uh, click on the particular rung and the element if you select it, it will come here. Double click on the element, automatically it will come here. Our next uh, important thing is we have to assign the address. So let me give the address. It starts from I0.0. So when you do with the hardware, you have to make sure that what what is the display for your input, output, etc. The what what is the, what address is given for your uh, I/O modules? What address is assigned for your I/Os, etc. Will be displayed here. So according to that, you can give the addressing inside the main program. So for now, you can directly start with i0.0, q0.0, etc. So input will be i, 
this is the first input. Output will be Q0.0. Okay. If you want to give a name for this one, you can give it. I can write the name as input. Boolean it will be there. Apply. Okay. See, you can give a tag name for this particular element also. Now again for this also I can do the same thing. Edit symbols. Simple I will give it as output. Apply. OK. Close it. Now for save the project. Minimize this. First what we have to do, you have to go to the hardware. Save and compile it. Once the save and compile is done, you can download it. So you can download it from the device. So once you start with simulation, you have to open the simulation on or off. So on the top of this particular main window, you can see an option called simulation on or off. Click on the simulation on or off. A simulation window will pop up. So this is important when you do with simulation. If you are doing with hardware, uh, you will be directly using the hardware elements. But when it comes to the simulation, make sure that you have the simulation on or off and the a window will pop up. After that, we will download it and then test it. It is taking a little bit time. Yeah, here you can see it. It is coming. So, whatever was already there, I will just close it. And uh, you can see a model of the CPU with stop, set CPU to stop mode, run. This is set CPU to the run mode, run P. This is set CPU to run program mode. And you can all see all the status signals also. It, it's a representation of the same CPU, hardware CPU itself. Now, I want to insert my digital input and digital output. So, in that case, go to the insert. So here you can see input variable, output variable, bit memory, timer, counter, whatever you need can be seen here. So I'll go to the input variable. You can see IB0 in that all the 8 bits will be seen. So if you want to change the representation here, you can give it as IEW0, it becomes word. And if you want to change the, uh, what to say, the format here, that is also possible. And if you want to make this to ID0, double word, that is also possible. So now what we can do is IB0 is the byte. So this has to go to the bits format. This has to go to the bit format. So then only you can turn on and turn off everything. Okay. So once this is done, you can insert an output variable also. So my output variable also will be of 0th byte because we gave the address as i0.0 and q0.0. So once this is done, make sure that the download option, the PGPC interface, what connection is given for the PLC simulation. So this model will support MPI, multi-point interface. It will not support TCP IP. So that you have to make it clear and uh, select the PLC sim MPI. Okay. Once this is done, Minimize this, go to the main block, download it. Do you want to overwrite it? Yes. Once this is done, go online. You can see the simulation in the stop mode go to the run mode. So now it's in run mode. I'll turn on the bit. You can see the output is on. I'll turn off. This will be working. So this is the way to download the program through simulation. Okay. So make sure that usually people will have a uh, confusion or they will get error on this part. So it might be default it will be like TCP IP. If the model is not supporting TCP IP, it will show error. It will show as unable to do the connection. So let's check. So for example, if I go to stop and go offline, 
and then change the uh, thing to TCP IP. See, it will show this error, unable to reach the module through online interface. So this have, can happen in the hardware module also. If make sure that there also you are choosing the correct PGPC interface. Uh, PGPC interface means the communication between the programming device and the uh, and the uh, PC. Okay. So now this is uh, this I'll change change it to MPI itself. Then uh, download it again. See, go online. It will work. Run. That's it. So hope this is clear with you. So we'll be back with another video. Okay, I'll go offline.